Well, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm so excited to be just joining you tonight live. Um, I don't know, it, it might actually be morning for you where you're at in the world. I know there's people joining in from all over. So I'm so excited to just be joining you and um, thank you. I, thank you for just, you know, chiming in here to watch this. I have been feeling such a strong prophetic word right now that I can't shake it. And I just wanted to take time to unpack it a little bit tonight for some of you and minister to those of you who can relate to this word. And um, in, in all, in all honesty, you may have already seen this. It was picked up by Elijah List and Charisma. Um, and so you might have already read this. So I'm going to, but I want to just take time to unpack it a little for those of you on here and minister and administer to you. So before I dive in real quick, I want to mention um, something is that uh, our, my ministry, our ministry has a lot of upcoming uh, things happening. I'm actually going to be um, in Joan Hunter's next weekend, um, the 20, let's see, the 24th through the 26th in Tumbolt, Texas. And I'd love to invite you to come out to that if you'd like to. Um, but make sure it, to see where I'm traveling and, and per speaking live, like in the flesh. And you can go to my website and we'll be sure to, there's a link right there. Yeah, you should see it on awarner.org. You can see that link. Um, but also there's upcoming um, exciting things that we're building as the ministry, you know, as there's needs, we're trying to fulfill the needs and say, how do we shift? How do we adjust as a ministry? Um, but I'd like to invite you to, on my website, there's a way you can subscribe to a newsletter. And I promise you, I, I am not one to do a ton of newsletters. In fact, I probably need to do more of them. <laughs> um, if you got, you, if you ever see my newsletter, you know that I, I'd maybe do it quarterly and they're like really big because there's been a lot that's happened, but I'm going to get better. I promise. <laughs> um, but there's a lot, because there's so many upcoming things, that's the best way you can connect to the ministry and see what I'm doing. I know that I'm going to be doing a C or two school this fall, and I'm very excited to have a, a whole bunch of other seers come in and teach with me on the seer anointing. So that's something coming up as well as I'm planning to do a, a long-term mentorship program. And we are heavy in the works of that right now. Our tech team, um, which is a very small group of us, but we're working very hard at all the behind the scenes. I see, I get the vision <laughs> and then I say, okay, now you help me do all the details. And, and my team's like, ah! <laughs> so all that to say, make sure you go subscribe to the newsletter. I will not, I promise I don't bombard you with weekly mailings or whatever. Um, I just want to give those who are subscribed to my newsletter the updates first before you see it anywhere else. Okay. That being said, while you're on here, it's good to see all of you on here. I love to see familiar, um, I'm reading all the comments right now. I see some familiar names that I know and um, students that I've mentored in the past. And I'm so excited to just be on here with you tonight. Make sure you go ahead and like, share this video. Um, and as well, would you do, do me a favor? If you are a minister, would you mind putting where you are located in the name of your ministry? Because I think that it would help people to be able to connect. Say, so say you're, you know, in Flagstaff, I think Flagstaff is, is that, am I saying it right in Arizona? Um, I could be saying it wrong, sorry. But um, I just remember my grandpa used to always, um, he was the orthodontist and he always worked on people's teeth out there. So that name sounds really familiar to me. I haven't actually been to it, but say you're from that area, you can write down where you're from, the name of your ministry, and perhaps there's someone who will watch this later on YouTube or a different social media stream and be like, oh, there's a ministry in my area that I can connect to 
and I'd like to connect. So let's let's do it together. Let's collaborate here and be able to network and and just share just just your area and the name of your ministry because perhaps it's going to help someone else, all right? Cuz I know there's so many great uh, ministers on here, you know, and I I think we need to network so that we can reach reach everyone with the ministry of Jesus, right? All right, so it's so awesome to see you guys on and thank you so much. Let me pray. Father, I just thank you for your Holy Spirit to flow through this live. God, I pray first and foremost that you would bless all the media, all the technology that's involved. Um, I pray protection that nothing breaks as I'm doing this live, God, and I pray that you would pour out your fire and uh, upon those watching this now or catching it later, Father, I pray for your healing presence to be released even now, God. I thank you for ministering angels that are there uh, surrounding the people that are watching this right now, um, just with your word of encouragement for tonight. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh my, <laughs> I feel so much of the fire of God um, on me. So I'm going to try my best to share this word, um, but we might pause and and just go with where Holy Spirit wants to go. You know, um, I'm always open to just throw my notes out and do whatever Holy Spirit says. But I do have this word that um, the Lord has just been burning inside of me. So I want to start off in um, scripture really quick. In Exodus chapter 13, and it starts in... Um, Verse 17, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country. Though that was shorter, though that was shorter, for God said if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert road toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of Egypt ready for battle. So the Lord this past month was highlighting this scripture to me over and over and over, and I couldn't shake it. So I started just researching um, com different commentaries on it to find out, you know, what is it in the original Hebrew? What does this word mean? What is this? You know, I, I started really on a real scripture, like a treasury hunt through the scripture because this word is such an interesting scripture. God is so amazing that as I was studying this word, a lot of commentaries actually point to the fact that although the, you know, the Israelites journey, like we look at it and we focus on a lot of times like that epic moment of Moses stretching out his staff and the Red Sea parting and them crossing through. But in this scripture, what's often neglected or we just glance over it is that they had a roundabout journey really to get there. They actually had like, it wasn't the, the shortest and quickest way to get to their miracle, right? It was like the, it was actually very roundabout. Like it, I wonder, this is just me because I'm a curious person. I just wonder if when they're going through it, they're thinking, well, why did we go this way? Or isn't there an easier way? Or why, you know, I bet there's a lot of why questions as we all have, right? As we're going through stuff, like, isn't there a better way, God? Don't, don't you know who I am? Like, <laughs> um, you know, and we can struggle with God, you know, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I was created to do this. Can't you speed this up, God? You know, we all have those struggles sometimes, right? So there, it wasn't the most direct course for them to get there. But a lot of the commentaries, you have to catch this. A lot of the, the commentaries point to the fact that, that, that as it says, the Israelites went up out of Egypt ready for battle. That scripture what that actually means in original context is they gained military order. 
to better prepare them for facing Pharaoh and the Egyptians through going the long about route. So tonight, I just want to take a moment and prophesy this over you. I believe right now there's many of us who have felt like we have gone the complete roundabout journey towards our miracle. It doesn't seem like this is the way of God because it's, you know, it's not how maybe you thought it would be. It's not without its bumps along the road. Um, it's not without, you know, it's just not with ease. And a lot of times we want the miracle with ease, right? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> I, want, I want the miracle that comes with ease. But there's those of us, and I believe it's a lot of us actually right now in this season, that the miracle hasn't come with ease. It's been, it, it has felt so roundabout. And the very thing that you have been praying, perhaps it's your, your word is you've been standing on for restoration for your family. And to get to restoration, there's been a lot of other things that have come along the way that eventually is leading you towards restoring your family, but you didn't see it going that direction, right? Now, I want to just clarify something really quick. The Lord does not desire for you to have gone through such warfare. That is not the loving God that we serve, okay? But in this process, I do believe in, in, in Romans 8, 28, that says God will work it for its good, right? Do we know that scripture? Sometimes we, we look at that scripture and, and glance over it and don't really listen to it. So listen, the word says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28. So in all things, in this process even though there's been probably a lot of warfare you have experienced god is working something he will take that rough road and he will work something good through it amen and when i look at these um this scripture about how they went out of egypt ready for battle they gain um it's in the common, a lot of commentaries point to the, the gain military order through that process. Okay, so let's take that and put it in terms of us right now. Through what you've been through, through what you've been going through, it's felt hard, it's felt roundabout, it hasn't felt direct, and it hasn't maybe felt with ease. You have gotten the greatest training ground you ever would have received. You have learned tools of absolute weaponry, how to do battle against the enemy through this process. And I dare to say to you, I'm going to be honest, maybe perhaps you could have only really learned this through the wilderness, through this wilderness season. And um, yeah. Yeah, I see you guys commenting. You're like, hey amen, that's me. I can totally connect. I get it. I get it because I can connect to this word. I don't ever preach or prophesy a word that doesn't, that the Lord doesn't speak to me first on, okay? That's, I won't live out, I'm not going to speak a word that I'm not living out myself. I just, I won't. So I get it. I'm there with you guys. Um, now, as I was praying through this, um, because I kept seeing the, this wilderness season. And as I was praying, I heard the Lord say something very clearly. First, it happened in a vision. And the Lord often speaks to me through uh, the gift of sight. I am a seer. A seer is a prophet who uh, receives revelation from the Lord through primarily the gift of sight. So we see, receive visions and um, if you want biblical basis on that, look at Samuel in the Bible. Um, he was a seer. And if you want more training on the gift of seeing, please check out my resources on my website. I do mentorships as well as I have book the seer's path on seeing. Okay, so that's just on a side note. But the Lord spoke to me 
through this vision. I saw this group of people moving forward out of coming out of the wilderness. And I saw them looking back, turning back and, and looking behind them to look at the journey that they had been through. And I heard this word then of the Lord, don't focus on looking back right now. Don't look back. So as you're moving forward and crossing out of this wilderness season, it's really important. Can I feel the fire of God right now? You feel that? Wow. Somebody, you're about to get healed right now. Right now. Let's just stop and wait on the Holy Spirit. I can feel his just, I can feel the Lord's releasing miracles right now. I'm, and I'm going to pray into this word. I'm going to pray into your healing for this right now. Through this word, I, I feel like so many people, you're going to get healed. I, I, can, I can feel this anticipation in the air. Um, I can't explain it. I can just feel like, like God's going to do something. And I'm so excited. Okay, back to the word. So the word was don't look back. It's, it's important for you not to look back at the season you walked through in the wilderness. Because what can happen as you're looking back at the length of the journey is you can get stuck in the trauma almost traumatized for the how long it has been and be your focus can be on the trauma of how the of the journey itself and the enemy can then keep you stuck in the trauma of of the wilderness can anyone connect to what i'm saying anybody like can you connect where you can say i anna i can look back over years of believing for this and almost feel just tra like traumatized for how long it's been right especially those of us who've been maybe contending for um healing from some chronic illness or uh contending for just restoration for the family i i keep saying that word because i know i keep hearing that god is restoring the families right now so perhaps it's been years of you just praying for for your family, for your sons, for your daughters to get set free from um, the cloak of heaviness or the darkness they've been under, um, you know, and you can, you can feel almost trauma from the, the, the journey itself. It's not just weariness. It's not just tired. It's almost, it's trauma from the journey. Amen. And, and the Lord was so clear with me. He said, Anna, Tell people and you yourself, don't look back. Don't stay stuck in the trauma of how long this has been. Right now, celebrate at what I have done. Celebrate what I have done. And this will help you to step forward out of the wilderness with this focus straight forward. You guys remember that as the Israelites, do you guys remember that part? As the Israelites actually crossed over um, the Red Sea, it was like the, the angel of the Lord and the, the pillar or the fire, I'm trying to remember if it's pillar cloud or the fire, but it, it go there in the scripture, but it was amazing. It came, it went from in front of them to behind them so that there was only one direction forward, right? And they couldn't, they couldn't even look at it at, at going backwards. It was, there is only one way, that's it. And it's forward. So I'm just going to pray right now because I, I don't want this to be a long, um, I didn't intend for this to be actually this long, but I just want to take moment and pray for those of us who, if you can connect to what I'm saying right now, you say, Anna, I have felt, I have felt almost trauma for, from how roundabout this has been. I have, um, you know, it's, it's been hard. I've gone through a lot of warfare through this and this isn't how i thought it would be i didn't think i would be in this place five years ago i thought i would have already been there by now <laughs> and um i didn't see all these bumps along the road to to get there so i want to pray for those of you who you you can connect to that so father i thank you jesus right now i actually and and, and say this with me if you can thank you jesus this is a hard one but thank you, Jesus, for my wilderness season. And thank you that you are working it for good. I can't see it, God, right now. 
but I believe that you're working it for good. And you are bringing, I can see that you're bringing good things out of this. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, I just pray in Jesus' name that you would break trauma off those of us who have been through the most roundabout course that has been hard and it's come with hardship. Lord, I pray that you would break the trauma off of this journey in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would remove our eyesight from looking backwards right now and, and correct it, God, that we would focus for Jesus on what is, we might not know the whole, whole plan, God, but I know the next step. Release the next step right now in the name of Jesus. I pray you would release, you might not see the whole thing, but just the next step in faith that you're supposed to take. That's just walking towards your miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Thank you, God, for these warriors who have been so trained through the firing and some of you you can connect to this you say anna i have been through the fire and back praise god and what has what has come out of that firing is the most pure worship pure worship that says lord i still love you i still choose to love you through it i will not have a spirit of complaint no no i will not have a spirit of complaint come on someone that's a word for you I will not have a spirit of complaint. Say it with me. I will not have a spirit of complaint, but I will rejoice. I will choose, choose, choose. It's a choice. I will choose to worship you and rejoice, God, at what you're doing. You may not have done the full miracle yet, God, but I choose today to thank you for where I am today and what you have taken me through, God. And I say, yes, Lord, and more. Yes, Lord, and more. Thank you, Jesus. Father, now I pray that you would release your baptism of fire right now. Whew. Baptism of fire. Thank you, God. Some of you, you're feeling the fire of God right now come over you. <laughs> Thank you, God. Baptism of fire that renews, that refreshes, Lord. Oh, that encourages our spirit so that we can keep going forward. Keep moving forward. Thank you, Lord. Hey, hey, now right now, um, someone, you're, the middle of your back is where you have um, chronic problems. I was just seeing the middle of someone's back highlighted. Um, you know, Sears, sometimes we pause and we look, we're like, <laughs> and you're like, what are you seeing? <laughs> but I'm just being honest, I saw the middle part of someone's, someone's back being touched. So if that's you, if you're uh, the midsection of your back, is um, injured, sore, um, or that's perhaps where you carry your stress, go ahead and agree with me. Put your hand on your own back because you have Christ within you. I hope you have Christ within you. Put your hand on your own back and we're going to pray together. I'm putting my hand on, on my back because sometimes I get, and lots of you understand this, um, I'll, I'll feel the pain in the place that is for the person I'm praying for. And I have, it's just a prophetic thing. So I get that I, right now. So Father, in Jesus name, I pray that you would release that pain. Pain go. Thank you by your stripes. We are healed, Jesus. Pain go completely. Hey, I pray for a full work now in the back. In the name of Jesus, I pray for straightening alignment and your shalom peace to travel up and down our spine over every nerve ending, every vertebrae. Thank you, Lord, and every cell. Somebody on here, please just agree with me if this is you. Lord, I hand you my stress. God, I've been really struggling with stress lately and um, it's not good. It's wearing me down and it's wearing my family down. It's wearing my, my marriage down. It's wearing my friendships down. And, um, even more so it's where it's wearing, it's come as a wedge between my relationship with you, Lord. So God, I just, I just repent for carrying that and letting it almost like leak and, and leak out into every area of my life, God. And Lord, I pray that you would Come now and, and realign my life. Realign my heart, God, 
but also just I give my stress to you, Jesus. And I'm not going to agree with it anymore. In fact, I break my agreement with stress in the name of Jesus. <sighs> Amen. Ooh, do I feel now the weighty presence of the Lord. Do you feel that? Thank you, God. Listen. Thank you for joining me tonight. I just want to say that. <laughs> I value people's time. So I'm not going to go on and on. Um, if you want long ministry time, you can do do a mentorship with me because I always do li the live sessions go hours and where we just bask in the glory and, and um, experience heaven encounters and the fire and, you know, but I just want to say this. God is training you. He has trained you to reign, to thrive, not survive. That's a word for someone. So, hey, you are going through, not staying stuck in this place. You are going through it. He is pulling you through. So let your hope be restored. I pray for the impartation now of hope, hope, hope. Do you feel it? Hope. Just waves of it is going to hit you. You're going to physically feel it. Hope to be restored tonight of your, your very circumstance that God is about to turn the page. Yeah. I mean, I really feel this, that this is the season now to step in to the, the, the miracle, the word that you've been praying for, that you've been believing for years. So I pray for your hope to be restored. I pray life back into that which seems dead in the name of Jesus. I speak life into your very promise from the Lord now. Come on, in the name of Jesus. I pray for the breath of God to just into that very promise for you to get move momentum forward again. Where, the, where some of us have felt stuck, I declare momentum forward now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's so good to see you guys on here with me. And I don't want to take much more of your time. I really want to encourage you though, as I mentioned, make sure you check out, go to the website, um, sign up for a newsletter if you'd like. Um, I'm going to be sending this. I will do this. Um, I want to send all my newsletter subscribers the written version of this word because I don't know about you, but I like to, um, now granted, I, I took time and I really unpacked more of it tonight. It's a, much shorter on the written word, okay? But I really like sometimes to print out prophetic words that I know um, Maybe not all of it spoke to you, but maybe a portion the Lord highlighted or you felt the Holy Spirit on it. So I'll take that word and print it out and put it in my journal or in my Bible and I'll pray over it and say, Lord, reveal to me if there's, because it, it says to test, test the spirit. So test the word, test this prophetic word, take it, which means take the word and actually pray over it and ask the Lord, you know, for confirmation. If anything I have spoken uh, tonight is really his voice speaking to you personally. So, you know, I'm going to send out the written word to my newsletter subscribers. Um, so, you know, it's no pressure, but sometimes it's nice to have that, like to be able to print it out. Um, and also I will be letting my newsletter subscribers know in advance when the long-term mentorship thing is ready to go when it's ready to launch and i i mean i want to say we're within a month of being ready to 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 run with it and and do this but i don't know i, I can't give a finite because i'm not the person doing all the background details i'm the visionary y'all <laughs> and so i can say let's do this and then my my team has to like come behind me and do all the technical details of building the program for it and everything. So we're close though. So I'll be giving um, my newsletter subscribers a heads up 
in advance. So um, before I let you go really quick, and, and I don't want to take a lot of your time, but I just saw something um, real quick. You know, the Lord speaks to me through, through visions. I saw this mother and daughter relationship. And um, I don't know this if this is you, but I saw the Lord bringing healing and restoration to that relationship. What I saw was verbal conflict between the two of you. I want to say the daughter was, she's maybe in her late teens or early 20s. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a good judge of age. Um, in fact, I look young, so much younger than I am. So it's never a good <laughs> statement to make, but I like the, the age thing. But I, I, I want to say like a ballpark figure. It's like young, like late teens, early 20s. But what I, okay, what I could see was the conflict verbal conflict between you two, it's almost like the receptors aren't healed. So every time you would try to, as the mom, whoever you are, if you're the mom, you would go to try to speak to your daughter, like confront in love or whatever, but it was like received really wrong and she just wouldn't receive it well and get really upset and really over hurt. And then maybe you're the daughter and likewise, when you go to confront or speak to your mom, the mom, um, your mom takes it as um, rejection sometimes. And so I saw this tension between you kind of like back and forth um, with this verbal conflict. And I do believe really quick, the Lord is bringing healing and restoration right now to your relationship in, the, in terms of um, communication and almost your recept your ability to your receptors like being able to receive the words from each other without being triggered in this emotional um, battle if that makes sense so father let me pray just really quick for whoever that is if that's you you can just say that's me that's me god i just pray for whoever that is right now father whether it be the daughter or the mother lord i pray that you would release your healing presence into their relationship right now. God, I pray for healing to all the verbal communications that go between them. And I thank you, God, for this relationship. Because what I see is this person is gonna be one of your biggest advocates in your life. Your daughter's your biggest advocate and your mom is your biggest advocate and you need her. So Father, I pray right now that you would completely wash clean any of the past wounding or trauma that's there. I pray for healing from all um, miscommunications in the past. And I pray for that communication to be healed now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, well, guys, thank you so much for joining me here. It's been delightful just to see some of your familiar um, names and comments on here. I pray. Uh, a blessing over your weekend. And hey, if you're a, a father, I, d I just thought I should say this. If you're a father, I just want to wish you a happy Father's Day early. Um, or if you're a spiritual father as well, happy Father's Day to you also. And thank you for the way that you pour out into um, the lives you've been assigned to, whether it be your children your spouse, or if you have spiritual kids, um, because I, I'm so grateful for not only my earthly father who so poured into me and still does to this day, and I'm grateful for my own husband who just loves on our family, such as a strong, steady support for us, but as well, I'm grateful for my spiritual fathers and the way that they cover me in their prayers and um, just cover this ministry. So, you know, happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Thank you for all that you do. All right. Blessings, guys. Take care.